Hello everyone, in the last class we were doing uh, some changes regarding uh, our application, the, the embedded application, we were configuring using the configuration properties to define the, the configuration of our equipment and the lanes and everything. So today what we are going to do, so and by the way, just to remember, uh, if you go to repository, class 2 was the first one where we did uh, set up everything. And second tree was the last one, which we uh, already created the logic uh, for the, the, pro the configuration cell. So if you come here, you can see the configurations already there, resources and everything. So today's class, what we're going to do is to first do some refactoring on our code regarding our domain, because it's a bit confusing right now, especially when you go on the equipment configuration, you have detectors and then you have equipment and it's like a bit of confusing. That's one thing which we are going to be doing um, now. So, and then next next, next uh, class, most probably we are going to do some changing on how we are generating the det detections itself. So that's it, let's start. So uh, let's first, again, thinking about, think about the, the, the equipment itself. So the equipment has ID, let long and lanes. Uh, when you go to lane, the lane has the ID and that's it. And uh, then we have basically two uh, separated uh, or like not connected domains. We have the lane which shared between the equipment and the detector itself. And uh, that's pretty common to happen to be honest because uh, the detector is being seen as a service on the service layer itself. And the detection and the, the lane etc. they are in the domain. But if you think about whole object orientation idea is when you think about it, should, uh, what, what we should be writing in our code, it should represent our real life, right? So when you think about it, the lane, it should have the reference of a detector because every lane has a detector, it must have a detector. So when we don't have this, this binding, it doesn't make much sense and we start to create a broken architecture. And here, just to make it clear, that's also why we have the interface and not just the implementation because the lane doesn't know anything about how the detection works. It will just have a reference of, in, uh, of, of an instance of this detector. It also, it, all, it also doesn't know what's a fake detector, what's, what's what, what kind of implementation it has. But that's the first thing we are going to change. So we are going to first change to have uh, the lane would have a detector, uh, a detector uh, instance. That's the first thing we are going to change. And then when we are going to the detector itself, we are also going to remove the reference we have for the equipment in lane. That's something which we are good. This is like this just have too, too many too many information. We are going to remove it from here. And the detection itself, we are also going to remove the lane and the equipment. So think about it. Uh, when you think about this on a hierarchical uh, point of view, uh, the equipment, oops, let me make me like this. So we have the equipment. From the equipment, you have uh, lanes. From the lanes, you have detector. And the detector is, re is basically regenerating a uh, detection or loss, a lot of detections. So when a detection is being generated, it's already under detector, which is already under lanes, which is already under or a lane specifically, and which is already under the equipment, right? And also keep in mind that equipment is going to have only one instance. We should not have more than one instance because the equipment is basically the application which is running instead of desktop or the, the embedded application which will be running, right? So that's going to be only one. Um, so thinking about that or considering this, let's go back to our, to our definition. So here we remove the lane and the equipment itself. Later when we need it, we can see how we are going to deal with that. So refactoring here is done. So let's go to the place where we are instantiating everything. So on the lane, here we have the equipment. So now we have the, we need the detector itself. So let's create uh, detectors for that. So in fact, uh, this should be done. So let's say ID here, we have to refactor it. By the way, now we are going to remove this whole idea of detectors here. Right, so we don't need this anymore because we have the detectors inside the equipment itself. Um, so here we have the lanes. Let just me let me just create the lane itself. Uh, wait, return new lane, and the lane uh, we have the ID and the detector. So here I'm also going to be creating a new fake detector. 
you will have the ID um, it's also named let me, let me do one thing so and then we're able to have a wait now I'm getting detection that's going to be our our uh, call right so fake detector is no, it's a processor and the executor service sorry never mind so there's no ID here, that's why I'm getting confused. So we have the, the processor itself, which is a consumer of detection, and we have the um, scheduler, the service executor itself. Schedulers, oh. uh, what's the name again? This is service executor, executors dot single, you feel it's new thread, single executor, that's it. So let's remove this return here. So what we're going to do is basically we're returning the we're creating the lane, right? And uh, we map. So for every lane that we should be creating, we're going to create a lane. So we create a lane with a fake detector. Then have the lanes here. Then we create the group map. Then I have the group map ID, latitude, longitude, lanes, and that's it. So we can remove that completely from here. Um, that's it what else now there's one thing which we can do so um, when we go to our application most probably we have something still broken but let's just do one thing here one thing that we can do is we can uh, remove that and say equipment and then we can come and say context.getPing and then we say equipment uh, or in fact yeah, we can have the equipment itself. And then one thing which I would like to do is to have equipment.start. That's the first thing I want to do because as soon as we start the equipment itself, the equipment or in fact uh, the lanes, yeah. So let's make that here. So we have the equipment and the equipment or we could have this as a runner itself. So let's keep this record simple, simpler. And let's create another uh, service called, let's say, uh, service equipment runner. So this is going to be a service and uh, there's going to be a method called like void run or start. Yeah, let's call it start. So we are using starter. Let's equipment starter. Then we have the method start, and this we are going to receive an equipment itself to run. Okay, so we're going to receive an equipment. So here we are going to call the equipment uh, starter, and then we are going to call the method start, um, and that's it. So the the whole um, the dependency we are going to do here on our side. So we're going to have an auto word. Or that's, that we don't need to do it in fact let's have our um, equipment here and then we don't need to have this in the end right so let's keep that here equipment then we do a constructor here and then when we call start we are basically going to call the equipment dot lanes and for lane we have wait 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 lane have the detector yeah we should have the detector here so then we do a uh, for each well first let's do a map then we get the lane dot uh, detector then we go for each then we do a detector dot start that's basically what we are going to be doing here right so then here we call this and then now what we need to do is to uh, in fact let me think about it we don't need to do anything because uh, the least or the when we think about configuration the equipment is going to be created here already so it's going to be available in the spring context then we are going to inject this inside the starter itself then it's going to be working now we, the most probably test what circuit is failing here uh, that's equipment What's the, what exactly is that? Ah, that's something else. That's the build itself. Let me remove this. Um, 
okay, let me try to run the application. I think the test is most probably broken, uh, but anyway, it's not going to fail here. So, doesn't seem to be working. Seems that we started the application twice. Let me check what's going on. Uh, let's go to our starter and let's um, debug it. Runs. Then let's see here. Okay, all the oh yeah, for, for, right, right, right. So that's one thing which I forgot. So when I did create our uh, detectors here, I didn't add any logic, right? So we need to do something. So let me add the system out print again. So it logged the detection, and now I run it again. And then now you see that's working fine. Okay, so that's exactly what we needed to do. So we did some refactoring on our domain uh, definition here, and now it looks better, at least to me. So uh, that's it for the class today. Uh, for tomorrow's video, I'm going to be uh, doing some changes because now, as you see, this those definitions or those uh, detections itself, they, they are not pretty much useful. They are really uh, not something which you can use because we don't have a plate and the speed is static. So next class, we are going to change it, okay? So I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.